Scoring Game 5 of the West Finals' first 12 of 16, a Slovenian clinic from Luka got cooking with a Serbian pass fake, followed by a splitting of a late double team and this to be fair questionable goaltending call on Gobert. Doncic's smooth mechanics display themselves when he flows into an Irving swing for a catch and release from 31 feet directly in the grill of Edwards. From the same spot, Doncic then uses this ball screen to flow into a tough as it gets step back, getting unbelievable arc on a double rainbow of a deep range bomb. Crossing the timeline off handed while being pressured by top wing defender McDaniels, note how a 180 to his strong hand while faking Smitty move with his body angle are followed by a couple stop and start hezzies that give him driving momentum and lead to a step back. However, this double ball screen sees Doncic get away with taking about four steps on his retrieval, but nonetheless up fake to get Edwards trailing him before navigating his way through traffic for the crafty push shot. More film on its way, but that said, just 10.7% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, can't thank you enough for your support. As we get right back into the film, we see one of the plays of the night commence from Doncic. Luka elusively smittying to split two defenders, chaining his gather step into a euro and tear dropping what initially seems like a floater to lively for an incredibly elusive lob. This early offense high ball screen allows Luka's mix of speed and strength to get him into the lane, where a snake dribble on Anderson keeps him at bay, and on this fall away, it's Doncic landing on one leg. Straight finesse. Anderson rightfully believes he can cheat under this gaffer ball screen and get away with it, given by high ball screen, I mean damn high ball screen just inside half court. But when you're dealing with the top player on the planet who's equipped with don't call it curry range, Doncic range, mans can plant two feet on half court and find the low center of gravity to stop on a dime and knock it home. That was some unreal shot making for him to knock down that pull up, especially with Anderson desperately rotating back to close out after initially going under. And after that play, as we would see throughout and in the aftermath of this Dallas victory, you see Luka smack talk in the heckling Timberwolves crowd. Look at Doncic, man, so inspirational. Screw them haters, brother. They're trying to kill you. Crossing the timeline with a hezzy 180 spin, this nifty entry attack in addition to a beastly Gafford push-off gets Anderson trailing Doncic, who has the can't not be respected and generationally high IQ wherewithal to realize all of this in real time and respond by stopping on a dime after a high momentum move from the very top of the arc and finding a way to stay composed for an incredibly difficult triple and the man Doncic is fired up, that was tough. Scrummaging around Minnesota's up to the level of the screen pick and roll coverage, it's Doncic push ahead dribbling to skirt around towns, baiting triple to get downhill, and pulling off a ridiculous off the backboard assist to Gafford. Getting trapped at the end of the quarter in an isolation, he reads and reacts to the defense, but also whips a 100 mile per hour bullet pass directly through Edwards. This facilitation capitalized on the attention he drew to set up an Uncle Drew finish around a young blood whoever you're cheering for. You can't help but take notes on how this Slovenian chisels around the stifled tower on this possession, refusing to give it up after drawing an extremely hard blitz. His execution sees him find an angle around Gobert, double pass fake to read his surroundings, then settle in to get a soft enough backspin to float it home on the baseline. Doncic is so damn under control. Four on three power play right here sees Luka catch Conley in no man's land, by locating a wide open Jones Jr. for a triple from the right corner. It's then Jones Jr. dishing and Doncic retrieving as an L cut gets him enough space away from Edwards to get leverage for this release, just a bewildering heave and swish. He then curls around another double ball screen to finesse home this teardrop over Gobert. And right here, fluidness and unpredictability on this catch are followed by a simultaneous changing of gears and direction. Pace manipulation to bait McDaniels into thinking he's attacking left, Luka ultimately draws a lean in and one that was ruled illegal before the 21-22 season. That was illegal, man! That was illegal! A call Doncic also got in the game prior. However, refs are still evidently getting used to this call being in effect after all this time. Quite frankly, that's the ref's problem, not Doncic's. 
To be fair, after exposing Anderson off the dribble, Luke has got to know the rule book won't be on his side for these types of plays as he leans in yet again for a little stat padding down the stretch, but to no avail this time. He does make the bucket though. Alas, putting his cat on a leash and taking it for a stroll through towns. Oh, hey. On isolation of Carl sees the bank get left wide open, allowing Doncic to make it rain. This wild moment would fittingly cap off a Slovenian sensation practical start to finish obliteration. He's Dr. Seuss, and I'm Shel Silverstein. The exclamation point in this Mavericks win was via this team's third best player, Derek Lively II, who makes Kathy Drisdale proud by gathering this Doncic dish in the dunkers, obliterating home the two-hander, and getting hyped for the vibes as this commenced garbage time and the Mavericks move on to take on Boston in the NBA Finals. What a damn run so far for Dallas. I've already got a preview of the finals in the works as well as a Celtics video, but if you want to see a breakdown of Kyrie Irving's Game 5 showing as a part of a look at the Mavericks performance as a whole in a separate video, make sure you splash thumbs up on this video, then subscribe to this channel and hit notifications so I know you're interested. Russ, did the Mavericks win game five in Minnesota or did the Timberwolves lose this one? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Well, maybe Russ couldn't answer that, but let me know your take down below in the comments section for a chance at next video shoutout and to compete for either a free jersey or shoe of your choosing. You only need three shoutouts to reach the top five, and the winners are set in just 22 days on June 21st, so drop your take if you want your boy D-Flow to pay for your free merch. Best answer down below earns next video shoutout and is tallied in the D-Flow logs as a competitor in my shoutout giveaway competition. There's two winners today since we skipped the shoutout last vid. Firstly to Kevin Charles who says, Opposing crowds, especially in the front row, need to realize it's not a good idea to talk shit to Luka during the game. He plays better angry. I guess that is Luka's key, Kevin. Nice take. Second winner is JJD who says, What makes the Mavericks so lethal? is that they have two different styles of point guards that can come together and complement each other beautifully. Kyrie is that fast twitch point guard that's going to get creative, hit clutch shots, and play so well offensively. If Luka needs a break, Kyrie can take the number one duties. Luka is the bigger playmaking guard that can go for long periods of time and set up Kyrie on cuts and screens, just like Kyrie can do for Luka. They're also a great pick and roll threat for bigs, as they are a show to watch in that department. They are the best guard combo in the NBA, and it's not even close. JJD increases his lead atop the shoutout giveaway leaderboard with that take. This man JJD is straight beasting out here. Anyways, this has been DFlow Hoops reporting. I'll see you next video, and peace.